Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program version 1.7. Yes, there is yet another version of the game out there and this one is called Room to Maneuver and is all about quality of life update. There are some minor part improvements as well, but the main thing is going to be how you will be able to set up maneuver nodes and how you will uh, be able to get new information data about what's going on in space. So let's get right into it. Let's get first some of the new part improvements out of the way. So um, the little engines, the ant and the flea have been updated with some new variants and some new models. You see this over here and then you see that as the bare bones variant. For some reason the attachment plate is inside of the tank, but who cares. And then the Twitch radial engine also has received an update. It looks a lot better, there's way more things going on, a lot more involved to design. And it now has a dark theme for those people who did not like the bright orange. We also have new nose cones for 3.75 meters and 5 meter parts. And we have improved RCS thrusters. Also, the Werner engine has received an update and it now also features some glowing exhaust nozzle if you fire them for a longer time. Nice attention to detail. And also the Puff monopropellant engine, which is of course modeled after the shuttle OMS system engine. It also has received an update and is now glowing red hot if you fire it for extended periods of time. So what can you do with the newest update? Well, what I try to do here uh, is to sort of make a visit to the moon without any mods, without any planning mods, without Kerbal Engineer, without any flight improvement mods, just everything that is inside KSP. And I'm using the built-in Delta V measurement system that has already been there from the previous update. So that was, I think it was called to V or not to V. And what you can see here is that we have enough Delta V to get to the moon. I'm still going to improve the upper stage a little bit with some Orion style service module thing going on over here. So this is basically just a little rocket building in KSP 1.7. Okay, and as the readouts tell us, we have ample delta V and thrust to weight ratio. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set, of course, my target to the moon. There we go. And there is a new button over here, it's called a maneuver mode. And what we see here are important information readouts about your orbital, periapsis and apoapsis and time to periapsis and so on. I've enlarged the important parts of the UI so you can better see what's going on. So on the left hand side, uh, on the top, we can see the delta V for the current stage. And, as you can see here, we now have a new altimeter mode. We can switch between sea level and ground level. Which is nice, because up until now we only had sea level. So if you landed on a mountain, then it would have read like 3000 meter, but in reality you would be above ground only 100 meters and would crash. This is a helpful improvement. Okay, on the left hand side you can see the delta V going down, my thrust to weight ratio increasing. I'm going to try to keep it around 2, not above 2.5, so I don't get too much atmospheric drag. And now I've got my stage separation, the stage indicator has switched to stage 2 with new delta V readouts. And as you can see on the top left hand, my apoapsis is closing in on leaving the atmosphere, which is of course 70 kilometers. When that happens, of course, I can coast there and then circularize. What I'm doing here is uh, try to try to, to raise my periaps as much as I can. And while I'm doing that, I'm clicking through all the other options that I have there. Lots of useful readout information that usually is only provided by Kerbal Engineer or other mods. So this is really a helpful addition and enables players to utilize this information without having to install or rely on mods. Okay, 
can we do a completely mod-free flight to the moon? Well, while we're attempting that, look at that. The skybox has been changed and updated with higher graphics. So, well, higher resolution, of course. So this is also a nice improvement, but it does not add that much to the game, to be honest. Looking at my readout, I'm seeing that my Apple apps is rising, but not as fast as my Perry apps is rising, which is exactly what I want at the moment. And then I will almost already be circularized in just a tiny little bit. There we go. All right, Moon is already in view. Look at that, looking good in front of the newly designed galaxy or newly painted galaxy. All right, we're adding a maneuver node, of course, and then a next level UI element is coming in here with the maneuver node gizmo in here. This is basically a scaled down version of the mod precise maneuver that I really like. Speaking of scaled down, it's so tiny that I had to scale the UI to the maximum there is. And I'm still enhancing it for you to see properly. So you can enter your delta V numbers just by typing them in. 20 meters per second is almost enough, so that was a good guess I did there. And I can use this gizmo with the scale on the right hand side. You can see it switches between 10.0 seconds and 1 second and stuff. The higher you go, the more delta V will be added, and the lower this is the scale, the more precise the maneuver node is going to be. So this is really helpful and is especially going to help at interplanetary transfer nodes, which we will look at later. And as you can see here, we can just push that to the left and to the right just a tiny little bit to make our maneuver a little more precise. This is of course a lot more precise than was possible if you dragged it around with the mouse, at least in my klutzy hands. And we can also warp to the maneuver node by just pressing that button on the left hand. Unfortunately, if you click anywhere uh, outside, for instance to aim for the maneuver node in SAS, it assumes you're done with the maneuver noding and just reverts to regular orbit display. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that, but maybe there is some reasoning behind it. Now we have our maneuver selected. We can actually plan multiple maneuvers in advance and switch through them with this interface as well. But we're going to warp towards it and then of course perform our burn. There we go. Okay, so far I have not needed any mod to perform all of this and be actually quite precise compared to stock games of the past. So now we're really going to have to do some precise maneuvering. So what I'm going to do is try to get a really efficient uh, transfer to the moon and therefore I'm just tinily ad adjusting my uh, maneuver node to make the periaps as low as possible. And then of course use the gizmo as well while focusing on the moon, which of course enables me to see a lot better what's going on. This was of course also not possible in the past. So this is actually a really nice update to the game and is going to help uh, especially novice players a lot who don't uh, yet have installed any mods or don't want to install any mods. So once again we're firing our engines and yes we have got a very precise encounter and now we are on our new engines in the service module. Yes I have used the new tiny flea engines for that. Or was it aren't? I always, <laughs> always mix these two up. Okay, beautiful flight around the moon. We're not going to land today. And yeah, now that we're back in the atmosphere, we're gonna see the service module burn up while floating through the atmosphere. Which is a nice spectacle. That's just why I have included it. All right, so this is what we can do with a simple trip to the moon. But can we do even more? Well, there is another uh, option if you have a rendezvous planned with another spacecraft. You can see your intersect nodes and you can adjust them very tinily uh, to get very close to your target. You can see on the left hand side on the intercept one, 
that I'm already in close vicinity of my target and I want to get really close before the intersect is coming up. So 10 meters is fine. What can we get to one meter? There we go. We're in millimeter uh, area. <laughs> and yeah, well, that's what I call a Kerbal Rendezvous. All right, uh, now, how do we get a rendezvous with Duna? First, I'm going to use a little trick. I have a craft in orbit and I'm going to try to uh, make sort of an orbit that matches the orbit of Kerbin. So basically, I'm trying to blast away from Kerbin and match Kerbin's orbit. Why do I want to do that? So that I can do another maneuver node and give it the beans, so to speak, that it should have an, inter uh, an encounter with Duna. And then I switch it around until I have the right uh, distance to get that thing to Duna. There you see, we, we are closing in, the intersect nodes are moving together, and just a tiny little uh, enhancement with the maneuver node itself. Oh, there we go, we got our encounter. Great! All right, now once again, uh, we're going to use the new maneuver node gizmo to adjust our orbit a little better because yeah, that's okay, but it could be it could be a lot better. So 930 meters per second uh, would be fine, but we also need to get away from current. But you've seen the date. It was 220 days in the future. So we're going to warp ahead to around that time. So we're going to have our encounter possibilities or, or transfer windows, so to speak. And then we're going to blast away to Duna. Rule of thumb, if you want to get away from Kerbin to a higher orbit, uh, fire your engines on the night side. If you want to get to one of the inner planets, fire on the daytime side. And once again, I'm fine tuning my orbit just from within that maneuver node interface. Maneuver mode? Maneuver node? Well, it's called maneuver mode interface, but we're using it to uh, handle the maneuver node. So yeah, forgive the mix up. Now I'm really going to make a very fine-tuned approach over here. I want to spend as little delta V as possible. There we go, we got our encounter. Now let's focus on Duna. And once we're there, yeah, even a tiny bit of moving this thing around is going to have a huge effect. So I'm going to scale that down again. And then there we can see we can adjust that a little better. But to make it even better, I'm going to go there on the next descending node, which is going to cost me a little bit more delta V than if I would do that in the first burn directly. But this way I can do it more precise to plan it out, because it's really just very minuscule tiny amounts of, uh, of thrust that are going to be needed to make these adjustments. As you can see here, I'm, I'm just moving I'm just moving the indicator very, very uh, slowly and still it has a huge effect. And it's only 44 meters per second of delta V, so that's manageable. All right, so that's how we can use the new fangled maneuver node interface to get an interplanetary transfer in Kerbal Space Program 1.7. Overall, I think it's a good update. It's a quality of life update. Not much other content going on, but I also have to admit I did not have a lot of time to sift through the preview version this time around. Anyway, what do you think about the new additions, especially the new maneuver mode that I have shown you? Personally, I like it, but I want to hear from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and maybe subscribe to my channel if you don't already have. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.